Hi everybody and welcome back to a new video of the solid principles for machine learning engineers. Last time we took a look at the open closed principle. Today we're going to analyze the Liskov substitution principle. So let's start from the definition. If S is a subtype of T, then objects of type T may be replaced by objects of type S without disrupting the program. This sounds a little bit weird, but all it's saying is that if you have some client code, then, and if you have a class, say T, then all of its subtypes can be used interchangeably by the client code without uh, harming the functionality of the program. Now, why on earth should we respect this principle? Well, there, there are a few uh, benefits. The first one is that the client code can use any subtypes of a class interchangeably. And this is quite nice because then we are sort of respecting an initial interface and we can use whatever concrete implementation we want of uh, that class without uh, disrupting the program. And then the other point is that if we do use this uh, interface for tapping into the functionalities of any uh, subclass of a given class, then the client code is sort of isolated from the class hierarchy of the objects it uses. In other words, uh, the client code doesn't know anything about the concrete implementation and the strategies that they use because uh, to carry out a certain behavior because all the client code needs is this interface which is established at the level of the, the base class. Okay, again, I feel this is gonna feel a little bit uh, ambiguous or abstract if you want. So we're gonna have a Python example to uh, show all of this in a very simple manner. Now, what are the problems that come if we violate the Liskov substitution principle? Well, there are a couple of problems. So first of all, uh, the main problem is that the client will depend on concrete implementations because at this point it won't depend uh, on the abstraction, on the interface set out by the uh, base class, but rather should know more about the, the behaviors and the strategies that the each subclass is using. And then the other big problem is that if a subtype changes, so if a subclass changes, then the client must change as well because it's not following the main interface because perhaps the recent one, but rather needs to know about all the concrete implementation of a certain method or behavior. So what this means is that the list, so if we, if we don't adhere to the list of substitution principle, then we have a sort of violation also for the uh, open closed principle. Indeed, we can think of the list of substitution principle as a carrier, as a supporter uh, for the open closed principle. If we uh, respect LSP, then there's a good chance, at least, yeah, to a certain extent that we are also respecting, adhering to the open closed principle. Okay, how do we spot uh, list of substitution principle violations? Well, we should ask a couple of questions. First, do subtypes methods have different signatures? So do they take different arguments? And then we should also ask, do subtypes methods have different argument types. Again, I know this feels abstract, perhaps. So let's jump onto a Python example to see how easy all of this actually is. We already encountered this code in the previous video when we were talking about the open closed principle. Here we have a simple extractor class, which uh, helps us provide an interface for extracting Mm, any type of feature if you want from data, but in our case, we're gonna implement a couple of concrete extractors. So one melt spectrogram extractor that extracts melt spectrograms, so an audio feature from some uh, audio time series, and then MFCC extractor, MFCC's 
being once again a type of audio feature. By the way, you are on the Sound of AI channel. So uh, here I do all sorts of things related to AI audio and AI music, and of course also machine learning more in general. So if you are interested in learning more about MFCC's MEL spectrograms and how to deal with audio data, please do subscribe. This is the right place for you. But let's get back to the, to the code. Okay, so we have a base class extractor, which provides an interface extract. And then we have a couple of uh, uh, concrete uh, extractors. So MEL spectrogram and MFCC extractor. Okay, so let's uh, run an example here and see how this code works. So we have some dummy data then we instantiate an MFCC extractor and then we call extract on MFCC extractor and we pass dummy data and 10, which here is the number of MFCC coefficients that we want to extract. This is a parameter that you usually would pass when you extract MFCC. Okay, let's run this. We run it and it says extracted MFCC. That's fine. So of course, as for the previous cases here, we're not really extracting anything. We're just using simple stubs for showcasing like the, the problem at hand. This example violates the list of substitution principle, but why is that the case? Well, let's ask the typical questions we should ask when uh, checking for list of substitution principle violation. So uh, do uh, our methods have the same signature. So do they have the same arguments? So let's take a look at the uh, interface. So extract takes one argument, that's a data, right? And let's take a look at the implementation of extract for ML spectrogram, then that's fine because it takes data. But in the case of MFCC extractor, you see here that extract takes two arguments. It takes data, and it takes number of MFCCs. And here we have a Liskov uh, substitution principle violation because the signature of this method is different from this one and of course from the uh, interface, which basically means we have a problem because what happens is that if we do have a some client code that uses this uh, classes, it can't easily swap one concrete extractor for another because uh, it ha these concrete um, classes do have different signatures for the extract method. Okay, so we should solve this. Now, I'm gonna give you a fake solution and so that I can show you also another case of uh, Liskov substitution principle violation. So let's say this number of MFCCs is just an int. Okay, so I'll just put it here as a annotation. So let's say that I can pass also another, um, say, argument to the extractor here, so in the base class. So let's say uh, here we will pass a, an argument called number of, um, say, coefficients and this would be an int. Okay, so now I'm gonna uh, change or actually add another argument here in the MEL spectrograms extractor. <clears throat> in this case, what I need to pass is an argument called number of MELs. So this is the number of MEL filters that we would use for extracting uh, MEL spectrograms. So here, uh, this is also an int. Now. As you can see, we have the same number of arguments in all of these methods, right? So they just follow the uh, interface provided by the abstract class, the extractor class. But here we're still violating the list of substitution principle. And the reason is that when we do pass uh, a value here for the second argument for MFCC extractor, in reality, we are passing the number of MFCCs, which is a specific um, argument, a specific parameter. But when we are doing the same thing 
for Mel spectrogram structure, this second argument isn't the number of MFCCs because it doesn't make sense for Mel spectrogram, but rather is the number of Mel filters, right? So do you see the problem here? We do have the very same number of arguments, which are two for both methods. We do have the same type, they're both ints, integers, but semantically they are different things. So once again, we are uh, violating the Liska substitution principle, but in a subtler way this time around, because we are going against the, the semantic level of these arguments. So they are different arguments in the end. Okay, so now that we saw that we have an issue here, so how do we solve it? Well, this is quite straightforward. So what we want to do, first of all, is get rid of all of those things uh, so all of those arguments which can be passed to these concrete classes as attributes rather than parameters in the extract method. So what I mean here is that this number of melts, num melts, could be passed at uh, instantiation time in the constructor. So here I would pass num melts and I would put it here, number of melts. Okay, and then I remove it from here. That's good. And for MFCC extractor, we can do the very same thing, but with number of MFCCs. CCs, num MFCCs. And of course, if I don't pass it, it's not gonna work num mfccs okay and this means that i can get rid of this okay so now let's take a look at the signatures so we do have in the uh, abstract extract method just data and here in the concrete implementations we do have only Data extracts takes only data, which is great. That's what we would expect to adhere to the Liska substitution pr principle because now all the different methods have the same signature with the same type of data. Right. And uh, as a consequence, we assign the number of MFCCs, number of melts, or whatever uh, per extra parameter as an attribute that's going to be passed at instantiation time in the constructor. Okay, so now let's run this once again. And of course here we have to change uh, this code and we should pass in the instantiation the number of um, MFCCs and we use uh, the typical number of 13 uh, MFCCs. And here I have to get rid of this. We can run it and Perfect, it's working. So we are, we've extracted MFCCs. That's all for the list of substitution principle. Next time we're gonna looking into the interface segregation principle. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If that's the case, please leave a like. It doesn't cost you anything and it's gonna make a huge difference for the Sound of AI channel. I'll see you next time. Take care.